This NFL Week 15 Picks Edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by MyBookie.ag. My bookie is doing everything they can to help DGENs only cash big. Use promo code SGP for a 50% deposit bonus. That's MyBookie.ag, promo code SGP. We're also brought to you by Thrive Fantasy. Thrive Fantasy is a new daily fantasy sports app built specifically for player props. Download the app in the App Store and use promo code SGP for an instant deposit match up to $50 at thrivefantasy.com, promo code SGP. Sign up and prop up today. We're also brought to you by Better Than Vegas. Better Than Vegas is the home for avid sports bettors, providing insights, analysis, and free betting picks, including picks from the SGPN crew. Better Than Vegas, it's like YouTube for sports betting. Check out all their free videos at better than Vegas. That's better than dot Vegas. We're also brought to you by Ace Per Head. Ace is the leader in paypal providers, and they make it super easy to start your own sportsbook. Plus, Ace is offering up to six weeks free over at acebread.com slash SGP. That's acebread.com slash SGP. Ooh, welcome everyone to the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean, stacking the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan. Real money, Kramer. What's happening, Kramer? Dog. Uh, you, uh, so much energy, Sean. Now I got to bring the Happy, energy. Great to be alive. Great to be alive. Yes. Why? Are you, why are you saying it's great to be alive? I just, I, I, I was just reminded of the harsh reality of the Kramer FML tour. After uh. finally getting a little excited, the holidays are back. <laughs> you know, here at the Sports Gambling Podcast, <laughs> we believe in and Christmas, Hanukkah, all the holidays should be celebrated. Uh, I guess that includes the Kramer FML tour because not only did Justin Fuente fire up the boat, not <laughs> the fucking boat trip is back to haunt me again. Not only is Justin Fuente back for another year at Virginia Tech, but the Giants came out looking like shit, and oh, every I other team, every other team in the division, <laughs> uh, Smir- Smirak, is that is that the first weekend all year the division's gone three and one? Must be. Yeah, M- must be the first time yet. N- of course, everyone's favorite division, the All Rise NFC East. NFC Beast, a- a- baby. Hey, the NFC Beast. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. Ryan, and you know, I've noticed you've been say- you've still been throwing out the All Rise, but the enthusiasm, the wind is no All long. Rise. All right, there you go. We'll talk about your buddy Hammy Jones in a little bit when we break down the Giants Seahawks game, or no, sorry, Giants Browns game. But uh, yeah, man, got a lot going on over the SGP network. We just uh, just dropped another, or just recorded, let it ride. Make sure you subscribe YouTube.com/slash Sports Gambling Podcast so you can get the uh, get the video version of the Sports Gambling Game Show that is sweeping the nation. Sweeping the nation. That will that will drop Thursday night. So yeah. definitely so, uh, smash that subscribe button. Oh. Hit that bell. <laughs> what else? Do they, I'm just trying to be like all my my favorite YouTubers. Yeah, you there know? you go. Smash the bell. I mean, we were part of the streaming community over the summer, Sean. We did. We fired up the Twitch page, and now we don't know what to do with Twitch. Although <laughs> it's still I, there. I think uh, I could see us dusting it off for a Super Bowl sim in a Super Bowl week. So put that on your docket. We got a lot of content coming up besides all the stuff we're doing for uh, NFL, NBA right around the corner. We're going to be joined by the NBA Gambling Podcast guys taping that episode tomorrow. Western oh. Conference win Bonus. totals, Eastern Conference win totals. We're going to put one on our feed and one on the NBA Gambling Podcast feed. Oh, so you're going to have to subscribe to both. Some cross feed pollination. Oh, well, Colby always says you got to know when to hop off a stream or whatever. <laughs> No, you can't. You can't change a stream. You Wait. can't cross a stream mid 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 stream. And basically, he's saying don't cross piss streams. That that's the message. Solid solid advice. All right, Ryan. Let's take a look at the leaderboard. The free roll football contest presented by Bet Spurts. Getting down to the nitty gritty. Only three weeks of NFL action left. Who is our uh, who's our week fourteen winner? Oh man. All right. I accidentally closed the tab. I'm back week 14. Uh, Amazingly Tampa Bay lady all by herself. Question mark 12 and four. Oh man. It's a solid week. Congratulations. Tampa Bay lady. Is it a lady? You know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna guess anyone's gender Ryan. That's for them to decide. 
What about the season long leaderboard? What are we looking at? Oh, for the first time in a long time, the top five, there's no ties, no nothing with 112 correct picks. Mikey CP six, two, two in fifth place In fourth place, Matt stream with 114 correct picks in third place. Sean Juan from Walgreens with 116. Correct. I was just at that Walgreens today in second place. Another incident. <laughs> oh man. I can't wait to hear about it. in second place. Gambling engineer with 119 correct and in first place with a commanding five point lead over second place and eight points over one from Walgreens and that's Wolverines to 2019. Ooh. What about gambling 100, engineer? What, what, second place, second 119, place. 124 for Wolverines, uh, 2019. Sean, I have a very special announcement though, because in seventh place is one of the OG Dgens only. Big Blue 78. Oh, yes. Hoping to receive an email from him after this shout out, but oh, OG. Oh, maybe the Oest of G's. Yeah. He always uh literally checks in. and figuratively. <laughs> He's dude, he I feel like as far as our contests, he he has the historical uh, like leaderboard as far as prizes <laughs> won for our contests. I, I wonder if we could chalk something up. All all time the all time free roll. Leaderboard. Will Mormon in the YouTube chat. We are live on YouTube. So again, make sure you subscribe live because you don't know when we're going to record. Partly because we don't know when we're going to record, but turn on the notifications. If you're sitting around, you get a little ding. Oh my God, the SGP guys are live. Maybe I can ask them a question. Ryan, there was a small incident at the uh, Walgreens. Not really at the Walgreens. It was when I came home from the Walgreens. Oh no. Got some wrapping paper. Oh no, this is already Wrap, bad. You know, sending out my wife was nice enough to buy Ooh, okay. my mom all of her Christmas presents because I don't know what to get her. That's Again, part of the deal, right? All these phones, they're tracking you, they're listening to your conversations. The least they could do is tell us what to get our wives and moms for Christmas so we don't have to figure that out. Anyway, she was nice enough to get the uh the presents, so I'm gonna wrap them up, mail them to my mom. And I'm wrapping them, and my wife comes in. She's like, "Why did you get what kind of what kind of uh, what kind of wrapping paper oh, is no. this?" And I go, "What do you mean? <laughs> oh, no. it's, it's wrapping paper." She goes, "This is for a wedding." I'm like, "What the fuck? Why would you even have wedding wrapping paper <laughs> out? You know, it's Christmas, and they have all this." I saw a bunch of happy birthday stuff, and then I saw some silver stuff, and I was like, "Silver is a Christmas color," and wow, so now my mom's getting a wedding wrapping paper on her gifts. I already wrapped half of the present, so I wasn't gonna, I wasn't gonna change horses midstream, as Colby mm, likes to say. Feels like an. Uh, th this is one of these like effective task situations where like you made it to the store, you came home with something to wrap the present in. Yeah. Uh, maybe a thank you. Maybe a thank <laughs> you. That's the well. I mean, it is for my mom, so it's tough for me to uh, get mad at her for it. Ah, oh, you were you were collaborating on a task. <laughs> Effectively I like where your head's it. at, Ryan. I like where your head's at. Let's get into it. Let's talk some NFL picks. Man, this is uh this is that time of year. We got two. This is getting us ready for the playoffs. Saturday NFL football. A wild card weekend. I'm already looking my chops. Three games Saturday, three games Sunday for the NFL playoffs, the new format. It's a little wonky, but God bless it. The triple header Saturday and Sunday is gonna be unprecedented. Ryan, we'd have two Saturday games this Saturday. Get yep. us warmed up, ready to go for the NFL playoffs right around the corner. Head over to mybookie.ag. Use that promo code SGP where you can play, win, and get paid. Uh, I mean, yeah. They're even doing a first deposit bonus up to a thousand dollars free ten dollar college basketball bet. So much action going on. Of course, the fifty percent deposit bonus when you use the promo code SGP. Deposit and withdrawal using Bitcoin, that sweet, sweet cryptocurrency. And again, you can bet it all, do it all over at mybookie.ag, home of the DGENs only prop bet. Hashtag DGENs only. Mybookie.ag, promo code SGP to play, win, and get paid. Get paid. NBA preseason. I know some DGENs are getting down on that. Uh, so, real quick, uh, Sean, I, I want to, I just. Real quick question, because I, I I was uh, I was on Twitter, um, and actually I didn't notice this at all because you know as you know I'm not I'm not exactly all over the social media except for fire uh, fire Twitter handle at Kramer centric, but I did see I did see that uh, at Sean T Green, which is your handle, yes, uh, great great follow uh, if you like the sports gambling <laughs> podcast especially, 
Uh, and I noticed that you were you were tweeting about. I didn't realize the reference, but uh, you were tweeting about the Bachelorette. Yes, this was brought to my attention by cousin Mush, of course, big time <laughs> reality. Uh, and, and he, what what is this about, Sean? Uh, like the DJs are a little curious. Uh, doesn't seem to be in line with the the typical viewing pleasures of a man who likes football, gut yeah. handicapping, well, meat. Ryan, again. Were you, were you uh, eating was, soy while while <laughs> tweeting? You are soy boy. You can't come at me with soy. Bro, I grow the fucking tri tip <laughs> last weekend. Get off my lawn. I was at home. I was working on mm-hmm. all the episode stuff that we do <laughs> after we record because I'm, you know, I'm a content machine. Yep. I'm part of the content I, machine. I, I, I'm doing I was, the same thing. Had my laptop out. I was sitting on the couch. My wife made me a whiskey. She has her bullshit shows on, okay. AKA the bachelor. So I'm, I, you know, it's on in the background and the bachelor again, money-making opportunity. Good time. There are some bets you can get involved in, Okay, but it was more a, a, a quote as a, or a comment as a uh, guy in television production. So now that the bachelor, they just have them locked down in this uh, La Quinta <laughs> or, but it's, Wait, it's, it's I can't do better than the La Quinta. No, but it's like a fancy place called La Quinta, but I don't know. Oh, okay. They pronounce it okay. differently. Anyway, it's a really nice hotel. So they can't do these dates. So they end up doing these, you know, <laughs> these hometown dates where it's like, Hey, I'm going to show you around my hometown. And it is the jankiest ghetto ass shit I've ever seen. There's a guy from New York and he's, he goes, also, they uh, yo, I'm walking here. He goes, "Hey, I want to show you how to hail a cab." And she's like, <laughs> "What do I do? Just raise my hand?" He goes, "No, this is New York. You gotta hail it like this." And I shit you not, <laughs> the the he comes. Someone has a prop oh, made up. Shit. It's a cardboard taxi that he's holding with like a closet rod, and she's next to him, and he's like going over to this. And again, it's like a ghetto ass hot dog stand. Like you have millions of dollars in budget. You can make carnival games yeah. that look good. Literally, it's like shit they cut out and just wrote on cardboard. <laughs> it's just the lowest production value I've ever seen in television. And so yeah, it was these hometown dates are janky as fuck. Well, instead of that, Thursday night football, <laughs> the Chargers head to Las Vegas to take on the Raiders. Raiders three and a half on the look ahead, which was already a puzzling line to me. Then the chargers go out and win a close game. Holy fucking shit. And the Raiders are a complete question mark. Raiders now down to three saw rugs was on the COVID list. He's out. Yeah. What plus one forty for the chargers minus minus one seventy on the Raiders. 53 is the total. Sean, this is the time of year. I pulled out the gambling, uh, the gambling notebook that I keep in week 15. It says, what does it say? Must win games actually start this week. Mm. Must win games actually start week 15. <laughs> so the Raiders have a must win spot at home on a short week with a team coming off a Pearl Har- I guess this would be like so did Anthony Lynn compare the win, the three point win against the Falcons to like dropping the atomic bomb on Japan and ending the war. We've mur- we've destroyed the people of Hiroshima Be- because I'm pretty sure that we were partying when world war two ended. Yeah. Uh, and on a short, we coming off a world war two celebration with only four days to prepare and a trip to Vegas. Well, here's the thing. It, it I think the line moved based off this Raider injury news. The Raiders are going to be without um defensive end Farrell, yep. safety Jonathan Abram, cornerback Damon Annette, and linebacker Nicholas Morrow. All have been ruled out and they fired their defensive coordinator. So they've lost four defensive starters and they have a quick turnaround with a new defensive coordinator. I think that's what the line movement is uh, responding to Joey Bosa and Keenan Allen. They're both limited. I, I think they will play Derek Carr though. He's, he's kind of been falling apart a little bit, having some interesting fantasy games, four games in a row with an interception. He's turning the ball over. I, I think Joey Bosa can have an impact on this game. I loved it at three and a half, but I'm actually, you're, you're taking the points. I'm actually going to take the chargers here. No. Yeah. Yes. Sean, you like a week ago we, we were talking. You, you can't now. trust them in a close game. So your your angle is that the Raiders are done. Yeah, I I think it's the Raiders have completely fallen apart. Um, that was a that was a horrible loss to the Colts. They should have lost to the Jets. Uh, they've been losing games left and right after that. 
And I think there is very much a scenario where I'm not betting this on the Chargers money line. I, I'm not putting <laughs> it into a tease, but I think there's a way Raiders win and don't cover. I, that's what I'm predicting because I think this is going to come down to uh, a. F- this feels like a field goal game. It's two bad teams, and I know with all those guys out, you're tempted to take the over at 52 and a half. I do think this is, uh, you know, Herbert, this is where he goes off. I think he has a really big game. I think Keenan Allen has a big game and you've seen it. I mean, you saw Phillip rivers, what he did to this defense against the Raiders. And I think Eckler can have a big game. Hunter Henry. I think he might be banged up a little bit. So I think the Chargers are going to be able to move the ball. And that's why I like them getting the points, but I'm not, I'm not playing them on the money line. That makes sense, Ron. I'm 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 actually speechless because I I didn't see this coming. I do think that Gruden has shown a propensity to to. We gotta do, get our shit going. Mentally. He's done well against the division six and zero oh, ATS. Uh, I just think this is a must-win team for a Raiders team looking at the playoffs and saying this is a possibility. And the Chargers just. Their coach compared them their own situation to Pearl Harbor. They came out and beat a shitty Falcons team. I, I I'm absolutely fading him this week. I was I was always gonna fade him this week. Uh, I'm I'm shocked you're taking the Chargers with the points. I mean, I'll look stupid if they lose by two. Yep. But I, I'm laying three here. I I don't I don't see how the Raiders aren't getting any sort of bump off the three point home line. I don't see that at all. Buffalo heads to Denver. John Hussey is the referee. Shout out to Moon off doing his ref comms. Uh, John Hussey, the ref, four and eight as far as the total. So he's an under ref. Doesn't call a lot of PI or roughing. And what I was getting at is I know that 52 and a half, at least for me, was tempting on the over. Uh, I'm not a big totals guy, but I would have normally went over. But the fact that this ref doesn't call PI or roughing, I, I think uh, could have an impact on the total. I like that level of analysis and, and shout out to the Slack channel, sports gambling podcast.com slash Slack. Sean, Saturday football. Yeah. Which, by the way, uh, are we, we don't love this Thursday night game, right? I, I don't, I don't love it. No. I mean, it, it'll be interesting to watch, but I don't even know if I'll actually, I feel like this is not going to get into our circuit card. I mean, we're on the opposite side, and I don't feel that strongly about it to get on my, Soapbox and make a case for the Chargers. I I just all those defensive starters out. I think Herbert, you know, shines, and I think Eckler getting involved, big game. Yeah, I, I would actually. I'm gonna say a name because I think it's a DGen potential prop, and that's Guyton. If uh, is Williams gonna play? That I don't know, but yeah. it seems like could with Keenan a, Allen and fun Eckler, DGen prop, a lot of targets going between those guys. Buffalo heads to Denver Saturday football in the middle of the day. Uh, this, this is always somehow this is always a surprise to the women in everyone's <laughs> life. What? Well, there's a game at one 30 in the afternoon on a Saturday. Really? You're fucking with me. What are you really trying to do? <laughs> Buffalo heads to Denver where Denver is a seven point home dog plus two forty five <laughs> on the money line. Buff the bills are minus two eighty five. Fifty is the total. This game's a mess. Uh, it's it's so hard to want to go against the Bills at this point, but Denver as a home dog, uh, Drew Lock, small ma- cock lock, mostly you mean, small cock lock. Shout out to the guy who tweeted at me. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't I don't remember what he asked that uh, Drew Lock be called if they win this oh, week. Horse cock lock. Horse cock lock. But uh, yeah, sure, whatever you whatever you want, buddy. Uh, it. Buffalo again. We're 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 ramping into to playoff time. The concerning thing about Buffalo, Sean, you know, I mm-hmm. like to look at the schedule. Denver's coming home after back to back road games. Yep. Buffalo, as as big of a letdown spot as Buffalo could have at this point in the season, coming off that big win against Pittsburgh, the show me win. Now they go on the road to what we have both agreed is a difficult spot because of the elevation, although. Some will tell you uh, if you listen to the the words coming out of Touts this week that Josh Allen played Division One football at Wyoming, Sean, yep. which what has the highest elevation of any Division One program in the land. Uh, all of that being said, Buffalo has New England on deck, and while I I kind of don't think they should be looking ahead to New England, I think they're going to look ahead to New England. Now, 
I, I don't know if I'm uh, convicted enough to back small cock lock, but I, but I'm curious on your handicap here. You're typically bullish on both these teams, but I, I have to imagine you're going to be laying chalk here. Yeah, give me the give me the Bills laying six. That's the uh, latest line. Oh, over right, we up, we're updating. Okay, yeah, that changes a lot, Sean. Well, I mean. Yeah, you know, convenient uh, late swap here. I, I'm Calling all over for the lefty I, in the I'm, bullpen. I'm all over the Bills. Their defense has gotten Matt Milano, that linebacker. That that has really been the the straw that stirs the drink for the Buffalo Bills defense. Their run defense has gotten way better, and you saw it when they just split them out four wide, and Allen can just pick teams apart. Stephon Diggs is going to have a huge game. Um, <laughs> You forget Broncos. They're still without Boye and Callahan. They're two starting quarterbacks. So uh, now Carolina was able to do a little bit of damage against them, but really, I, I think Josh Allen is going to have a field day. And it's weird because he he's dealing with a slight knee and ankle thing, which normally would be a, almost a, something against him. But I, I think it's doing a a weird thing to Josh Allen, and that it's forcing him to sit in the pocket, see the field, and he's seeing mm. he's seeing the field very well. Not scrambling a ton; he doesn't have to. He's throwing accurate balls. I don't think the weather is going to be an issue. And lastly, the coaching: Sean McDermott, a much better coach than Vic Fangio. Uh, Denver not really playing for anything. Buffalo, I, I think, is just fired up, dialed in. Uh, you know, they had a primetime game against Pittsburgh, not a problem. Primetime game against San Francisco. Not a problem. Primetime game against Denver. Not a problem. Give me the Bills laying six. I, I really like them here. I mean, Denver going up against Carolina. Yeah, they hit some deep stuff with Hamler. I, I just don't think that's going to be there for them against this uh, Buffalo well, defense. Well, and I think I think you know the Carolina defense is a, is a defense that we've called out all year. As some you know they're not yeah, exactly they're super suspect. A, a tough a tough defense. Um. <laughs> Yeah, I, I look. I I was gonna have a, some pause that when when this was seven. I think when it's short of a, a touchdown, uh, it's hard to want to fade this bill. I mean, Sean, have you looked at their schedule? I mean, it, it, this is one of those kind of you know it's always fun to do in hindsight uh, to see what teams have done. But when you look at what the Bills have done this season, it actually gets I, I think more impressive uh, when you look at the fact that they haven't really lost. I mean, they lost to the Titans. They lost to the Chiefs. Yeah, and then they lost to the Cardinals, which on that hail mary play, they lost on a hail mary. And, and they, even that play was that was a great game by Jesse Allen. He drove him down on the road. Great ball to Stefan Diggs to what should have been win the game. If they don't lose to that Cardinals team, we're talking about a team that's on a seven game win streak. Quality wins against uh, against Seattle. I mean, again, this this. You know, everyone thought I was crazy putting the Bills in whatever the AFC Championship, saying Josh Allen, dark horse MVP candidate, making my number one fantasy football quarterback. He had a little a down stretch in the middle there, but he they've been playing great as of late. I, I mean, this team is just gelling, and you don't want to fuck with this team in the playoffs. So, I'm all over the Bills. Yeah, I mean the the last thing I have noted down here is that. Um, you know, it's always nice to fade Drew Locke coming off a, a nice situation. So I think while I don't love the, 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 the caveat is that Denver is coming into a very positive situation again, coming home after two road games and Buffalo has this strange kind of sandwich look ahead spot, but I just, you can just pass on the game. I guess if you're not going to take Buffalo, I just don't know how you're grabbing Denver without a full touchdown. Next up, Sean, we got prime time Saturday football. Ah, oh, man. I, I it's going to be a fun Saturday. There's a fight. Uh, there's college, Canelo, there's college, college football, basketball, championship college, games, college football. And we got a nighttime NFL, Sean, the green Bay Packers. They were hosting the Carolina Panthers minus nine minus four twenty five on the money line. Carolina plus three forty fifty one One and a half is the total. Uh, I, I, you know, I think instinctually you're like, well, Aaron Rodgers, Green Bay at home, lay the points. But I, I think they're going to struggle in the same way they've struggled against some other teams. Carolina has moved the ball nicely. We always talk about Teddy Bridgewater, the Butler, and how good he is against the spread as a dog. I think it's six and three. Yeah, uh, this season. Um, uh, I think you got to take the points. I, I think you got to take the points. And I think if you're Aaron Rodgers and this and this. Packers team. I mean, even, even look at some of their games recently uh, where 
they, they basically the Packers struggle to cover over a touchdown. I think they're going to struggle with this Panthers team. They're well coached and they're able to move the ball. You saw it. I mean, you saw it a little bit against that Denver game that the game got away from them and maybe that could happen here. I think part of that was just coming off the bye and teams coming off the bye really struggled for whatever reason. Carolina's defense is bad. So there's there's a point where this game could get away from them, but Teddy Bridgewater again doesn't turn the ball over, doesn't make it easy for Green Bay. They are without uh Christian McCaffrey, but Mike Davis still pretty solid. They've been without him for most of they're the season. They're getting DJ Moore back off the COVID list. So I think they're going to be able to throw on Green Bay a little bit and at least make this an interesting game and Teddy Bridgewater aka Teddy Covers great as a dog and just great overall against the spread. Kind of the perfect scenario that uh, Green Bay's given up nine points here. Twenty three and six against the spread as a dog in his career. That's pretty remarkable. Yeah. Uh, also, <coughs> call it out. Uh, there, there's gonna, there's potentially snow. Um, it's gonna be cold in the twenties with snow, and uh, while the wind shouldn't play a factor, uh, we could have a, a nice looking Saturday night football game. Sean, let's head over to Sunday. We're both on Carolina, right? Yep. All Head over them. Before we head over to Sunday, give a shout out to Better Than Vegas. That's right, Better Than Vegas. Tons of free videos. Guys making picks. That's what it's all about, baby. They got a ton of uh, great content over there. We got our own page putting out video picks. You can subscribe to our Better Than Vegas page, sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash BTV. Take you right there. They're doing some uh, capping contests. Thousand dollars to the handicapper that wins the most units, and a thousand dollars to the handicapper that has the most followers. Again, if our page wins, we will uh, give out the thousand dollars. So why don't you throw us a subscribe? slash btv And again, it's uh, basically like YouTube, but for sports gambling. You know, the real kind of social networking you want. The reason. They created the internet so guys could talk to other guys about sports gambling, who they like, what they like. Uh, it's a fun, fun service to use, very easy to use. And uh, check them out. Better than dot Vegas. Better than dot Vegas. Uh, Sean, you think that pussy uh, founder of Facebook knows <laughs> Mark a Zuckerberg? Goddamn thing about gambling. No, he's too scared, man. Too scared. Sunday, 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 Houston uh, coming off a thrashing by the Bears. Sean, they head to Indy, where Indy is a seven point favorite, minus 325 on the money line. Houston plus 265. 51 is the total. Sean, Houston is a close your eyes special. Mm. It is quite gross. It is quite gross. But I, I just, this team is destroyed, right? Like they, they don't, they don't have any fight left in them. Indy is kind of rounding into shape. Indy looks like a team that's going to put teams away now, but it is Houston Indy. And that is oh, it, it th- don't those games always get played contested tightly. Yeah, but I I think this Indianapolis team, they just have a and it makes sense cuz of the Colts. They have a horseshoe. legit horseshoe up their ass. It and wasn't I know, just Andrew Luck. I know for saying cuz I had Houston money line parlayed with Cleveland a money line against the Titans. That would have been a huge payday for me. Houston gets the ball down to the one and then just Fumbles the snap to end the game. Houston is, they've been snake bitten. I mean, they had a little bit of fire there after the uh, Bill O'Brien, after they got rid of him, but that, that fire is kind of gone. T Y Hilton. We, t- we laid out the case in the DFS picks podcast. God damn out of nowhere. Not only is he, he's getting hot at the right time. Him and rivers. The chemistry is really heating up seven points. I, I just don't think it's that much. And the Houston defense, they it's made, not. they made Trubisky look amazing. Now you throw in the fact, uh, well, Colts, they're getting some of their defense back. Darius Leonard, he got a little banged up, but he was um, full participant in practice. Xavier Rhodes is questionable. So we'll see. I, I don't know if Brandon Cooks is going to be back yet. I do think Chad Hansen, fun play in uh, DFS. I, I don't think on the is, Texans. I don't think Cooks is going to be back, it sounds like. Yeah, I mean, uh, what's the point in rushing him back? Uh, you know, and then you still have the, you know, it still comes down to Frank Reich versus Romeo Cornell. That's enough to, to get me to lay the uh, seven with the Colts. Couple right? other nuggets uh, again, situationally, Indy coming home after back-to-back road games, which they've been definitely on the uh, the ascend, and the Houston on a back-to-back road spot. And then I'm doing math, Sean. I, I know we don't quite have the home 
edge that we might have had in the past. But let, let's just, for the sake of the exercise, let's still assume that teams are getting a little bit of a bump for home. They were laying three and a half in Houston. So, an old school conventional wisdom means that the line should be nine and a half. Yeah. No, and, and seven feels like a. Uh, so, obviously, I, I think I under. But, like, so for this to be a true closure eye special, it's got to be north of that nine and a half benchmark. And I, I don't think just stripping any sort of home edge makes sense to me. So, uh, I am going to. I'm, I'm going to go with you. I, I know I take Indy every week, but it's going to start looking smart. Because uh, th- they look like a team ready to go. They look like a team ready to go for the playoffs. Yeah, and and they're they're one of those teams. I always try to identify they, them and the Bills, especially, seem like they're ramping up to the playoffs. And Indy just seems like that team where they're getting all the right bounces. Uh, breaking news: Jake Paquin, friend of the program, does uh, does the Lock Dog Tease graphics for us. He's pointing out that Chad Hansen. I miss this, Ryan. He I don't got think- demoted to the practice squad. So uh, I'm gonna have to adjust my DraftKings lineup to remove Chad Hansen. Is that accurate? Because I th- I thought it was just an administrative move where they put him down and they bring oh, him okay. back up. Well, we'll have to look into that then. Um, because I I don't think guys are getting healthy. But yeah, if someone can someone can correct us, but I'm pretty sure the expectation is is that he is going to be playing and probably getting the majority <laughs> of looks this weekend. Something to look at uh, later on in the week. But man, how do you not love Indy in a tease like yeah. that? Th- God, well, it's a, it's a division game. It's a revenge game. I mean, you could make the case for Houston pretty easily, but uh, yeah, I mean, you got to go Indy right now. Shout out to Biz Nasty too. He's he's saying one love and uh, real quick uh, catching up on the chat, Sean Monarch Pride over on Twitch uh, saying what's up. Glad to see two of the big three are here. Is Colby <laughs> dumpster diving again? <laughs> Shout out to Monarch Pride for just attacking and, Colby and relentlessly. Big, and big three, I, I assume he's uh, alluding to Colby's a uh, COVID fifteen. Uh, <laughs> so there's no need, Monarch Pride. There's no need. Uh, you know, how do you he tell another man he, he looks like shit? <laughs> you have Monarch Pride give. do it. You plant someone in the chat. Exactly. You... Everyone should be as lucky to have our listeners to help point out physical flaws of their coworkers. Uh, you know, it's been a tough nine months for everyone, Sean. Exactly. Detroit heads the Tennessee. Uh, the expectation here is Stafford probably not going to be playing. The line has bumped all the way to 11 from eight and a half on the look ahead. Tennessee minus five eighty on the money line. Detroit plus four seventy. Fifty one and a half is the total. Uh, I mean, all right. So Chase Dan if Chase Daniel plays, um, you know, in some ways if the line was going to be eight and a half with Stafford only moving it two and a half points, I, I don't know if that's correct, but also on the other side, I, I look at it. Anytime I look at trying to lay a big number with Tennessee, I don't feel good about it. So where are you, where are you going with this one? Ryan, I'll, I'll give you the answer in a second here. Just want to hit some breaking news for me and rap before a lot of people uh, More breaking news. Nice. No, this isn't breaking news, but it was, it was trending earlier today. The Lions uh Pro Bowl center or potential Pro Bowl center, Frank Ragnow. Mm, suffered, Arkansas guy. Suffered a fractured throat in the first quarter of Sunday's game. Finished the game. Hash <laughs> I mean, that's a real it's a real fucking dude. Is he playing this week? Could miss this week. He's not being ruled out with a fractured throat. This is why we love the National Football League. Guys are playing through fractured throats. Be careful Googling that on your work computer. <laughs> Just he did, uh, you know, he he did. Uh, I mean, to me, D. Henber, Ryan. We've been talking about D. Henber. It's a D. Henber to remember. Uh, get your uh, wife or girlfriend the thing she loves most, and that's a a giant Derrick Henry, a giant two hundred and forty pound <laughs> black dude running, and hitting the hole hard. Is that what? That's what everyone's wife needs. Run through a motherfucker face. I mean, Derrick Henry against this Detroit Lions. Run defense. It's just screaming at me that it's going to be. Uh, I don't see how they start them. It feels stop them. And and Detroit. It's a non-conference road game. That you know, Chad uh, Daniel or whatever he's starting. Uh, whatever his name is. <laughs> you know, Stafford. Even Chase if, Daniel. Chase Daniel. Sorry, former Chase superstar Chad. backup of Drew Brees. And the replaced Eagles. by the coach's son and, and uh, the Chiefs. He's really mm-hmm. racked up a ton of cash without doing around. much. Or you get Stafford hurt. Um, you know, in Tennessee, their defense has been pretty bad, but mostly it's been the past defense. The 
their, their run defense isn't amazing, but it's not horrible. I, I think they're middle of the pack. Um, Detroit dead last in weighted defensive DVOA. Tennessee. I'm, I'm sorry, what's going on here? Tennessee must win. And this is just a, a great letdown spot for Detroit. They just had a, you know, they had their Super Bowl against yep. the Packers. Now non conference road game in Tennessee. Without their quarterback. Yeah, I, I don't love laying a big number, but I, I think you gotta take Tennessee. I think out of principle, I, I just while I probably would have liked the eight and a half if it was Stafford. And I'm pr- like, I think the expectation is Stafford won't be playing. I, I don't know if, if I don't love taking a team off a blowout either, but I, I don't know if, if Chase Daniels only two and a half points worse than Stafford. And so I, I would make this two touchdowns, Sean. So let's yeah. take the favorite. No, it's, it's a chalky pick, but yeah, I, I wanted, I was trying to pull up the, uh, the money distribution while we were talking and I, and I'm not seeing a ton of this number. There's opportunities to get cute this week. Yeah. For me, it's not it's not Detroit plus eleven. I just hope I'm not chasing. Like that's the thing I'm most worried about. I, I hope I'm not chasing a, a team that looked good last week. But I, I do think the Titans uh, are probably the right side. Well, famous last words. Tampa Bay heads <laughs> to Atlanta, where the Bucks are minus six on the road. This look ahead was two and a half, Sean. I'm not really sure what changed so much in this game. Minus two fifty on the money line. Atlanta plus two ten. Fifty and a half is the total. You know, I, I enjoyed when Notorious Parlay, uh, winner of the Monday Night Showdown, millionaire maker, and guest of the Sports Gambling Podcast on our DFS show this week. Again, you already know that because you smashed that subscribe button. Uh, he he threw out a Tom Brady stack for his DFS lineup, and I kind of liked the angle. Yeah, uh, but w- what is this team like? What if you if you if you're facing a team that has to run the ball like they did last week? The Bucks seem to be able to do stuff, but are they going to be able to slow down this passing attack? We've seen teams get over the top on them before. If anyone's going to get over the top, it feels like this Falcons team could do that. Well, Julio not practicing. I, the I don't know. Guy never practices. Well, I know that's what I'm saying. It's tough to know whether he's a go or not, and their their win loss with or without Julio is really a big difference. So that that's tough to handicap right now. I mean, Brady, he looked pretty cold throwing the ball. Just hasn't really looked great all year. No, he's had some moments. He's had some good games, but he doesn't seem completely in sync yet. And I think forcing Antonio Brown into the offense and crowbarring him into the offense is really kind of thrown their offense out of sync. Ronald Leonard Fournette, anyone? <laughs> Ronald Jones now on the COVID list, so he's going to be out. Leonard Fournette is being forced to uh, carry the workload there. <laughs> it was a healthy scratch. Like this, yeah. This team is a mess. And, and honestly, Sean, again, like you when you go through and kind of start checking in with their schedule, in hindsight, you start to uh, ask more questions than get answers. You start to look and well, like, wow, they really haven't beaten anyone good. The Packers game stands out as like an anomaly, and and all, every other game, it's like I, I don't really know what I'm seeing here. I I do. Th- I'm gonna stick with it. I think if you can pass the ball, you can do some damage against this Bucks team. And I I I just this, this is a disrespectful line. I, I know the Falcons have been you know relative uh, trash because they know how to lose close games, but they also play close games. And six points at home on the turf. I, I hear you about Julio. I definitely hear you about Julio, but I, I, Sean, you know what? I, I kind of like Atlanta as a punt defense play in DFS, D, a DFS this week too, because Brady looks bad. Yeah, he seems inaccurate. I'm worried about though Tampa Bay pressuring Matt Ryan, and we saw they were able to pressure Kirk Cousins. Yeah, I, Kirk I Cousins that. scrambled a bunch, and and they also had the running game of Dalvin Cook to kind of help take the pressure off, and still couldn't get it going. I mean, they missed a bunch of field goals. So maybe that was the difference, and maybe that would have kept them in the game. Is this a Super Bowl opportunity for Atlanta yes. division game? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I'm going to lean Atlanta here and take Atlanta the six. is. Six, I don't feel amazing. About Atlanta it, is six and one in their last seven against the Bucks. I know Jameis was there for a lot of those <laughs> years, but again, I mean Tom Brady has less has has not yet shown me this season that he ha- is is a. I don't think this dude's great anymore. I mean, he's got a great roster around him and a great defense, but uh, I, I'm my expectation. Atlanta throws the ball. Matt Ryan has a big, can have a big game in this one, and I, I don't know if Tom Brady can keep up. 
Next up, Sean, New England heading to Miami. Uh, feels like this game it's a happens. Baby fucking wheel, man. Every year and every year, New England lays an egg down in Miami. Miami minus two, minus one thirty on the money line. New England plus one ten. Forty one is the total. And the last time Bill Belichick was on the road facing a rookie quarterback, it was a pick 'em, and I laughably took the Chargers. Yes. Now I, I San Diego Super Chargers charge. I, I I just I don't know I don't know how I how, how do I find my way to taking New New England here Miami's such an attractive pick here under <laughs> a field goal yeah I don't know Tua I, sucks I know but this this Bel- Miami team. Belichick versus rookie quarterbacks after yeah, he took know, down I Herbert know, I know it's now twenty and five uh, Belichick versus Flores former defensive coordinator I know I know I know Belichick after a primetime loss Belichick with extra rest. But then on the other side, um, Sham Newton. Do we really want to back no. Sham Newton on the road? No. And this New England team always does. They always struggle in Miami. M- Miami really needs this game. Oh man, this is. Uh, I think this is Tough one spot. of the one of the harder games to call. I mean, Miami is a pretty good defense. They're good at generating turnovers. However, they're much better against the pass. Not as amazing against the run. I think they're like twenty third in rush DVOA. Oh my god. Um, I don't know. That's that's kind of what's going back and forth in my head. I I think teasing the Patriots up to eight, you could definitely talk me into that. But I mean, just watching that Dolphins game, and this has to be three. I was I was listening to Bill Simmons on the on his podcast with cousin Sal, and sometimes he just says the craziest fucking things. One, he says, uh, he said in on a recent episode that. Uh, it, basketball is now America's pastime. So what have you never seen football? Come on. The other thing he said that was crazy. <laughs> I like how that's the league you lead with. <laughs> the other thing he said that was crazy was he he goes, Tua looked really good in that Chiefs game. What? what? I was on no, he didn't Dolphins watch the plus seven. He didn't watch the game. They were lucky to get that back door, and that was a lot of garbage time. Devontae Parker is banged up. Mike Gasecki is banged up. I'm gonna uh, uh, can I take? I, why I really, is it not three? Because they want you to take uh, Miami, Ryan. I, I know. I feel like I'm falling. Is this for your the first trap. time gambling? <laughs> if I'm falling for the trap, but how do you take New England? How do you take Sham Newton? Yeah. To your point, how do you take Belichick back to back road game? I know that's generally good for him. The thing that I honed in on is uh, this is a, a two things. One, the home team in this matchup, Sean, crazy fourteen and three in the last seventeen. The home team is against the spread. Number two. Uh, Brian Flores is good against the spread. They are 10 and three this, this year against the spread. I feel like I'm missing a game there. And if you ignore his first four games as the head coach of the dolphins, he's 19 and six over the last, you know, year plus some, uh, he's just a good coach against the spread. And the, the, the reason for pause is Belichick versus a rookie quarterback. And all of the weapons missing. This could be the Lynn Bowden party. But what? What? If Who? The, I'm just saying. This is going to be an insanely low-scoring game. Mike Kosecki did not practice. I, I don't know what. What is their? What does the Dolphins' offense consist of? But then you could just turn it around and say the same thing about what? It, how you, are the, t- you know what? You're right. This should be three, but we're taking the Patriots. You're right. You're, you're like. It's a baby fucking wheel, man. Let's be smart about this, right? Yeah, I'll take New England plus two. It. it the, Don't they the Miami, lose when they go to Miami though? What are we doing? We're breaking all the rules. Yeah, I think the strongest rule is Belichick you versus said, a Don't rookie, get cute. A rookie quarterback. No, is but I, I don't think that is cute. <sighs> all right. Why I, don't you take uh, no, I'll take the I'll take the Dolphins, Ryan. You can no, take no. the Patriots. I, I, I went into this starting with why isn't this three? I'm gonna finish with why isn't this three? Miami has covered in their last five at home. Let's go. They're just a covering machine. All Let's right. go. I'll go with you with the Dolphins. Let's go. Uh, Let's go. Let's go. Tua, baby. Let's go. All right. He's he's special. He's a prodigy. Let's do it. I'm Tua. waiting for you to cue the music. Let's go. I know I'm gonna instantly regret that. All Tua, right. Tua. Tua. Talking about Thrive Fantasy. Thrive Fantasy is the new way to play DFS player props. So fun. You uh they give you 20 player props. You take pick your 10 favorite over under. And that is your DFS lineup. 
We just we gave out a, a Saturday night NFL DFS lineup on our latest DFS picks podcast. Check that out on our feed. And it's just, it's gotten me really into the prop market. Again, we got a sweet sign up bonus with them. Use the promo code SGP, instant deposit match up to 50 bucks. Hey, toss 50 bucks in there, get that deposit match. You got a hundred dollars to play with. I'm telling you, this is not a saturated market. So if you do your homework on these player props, I think there's some real opportunity. There are efficiencies to be had. Yeah, the the mainstream, the mainstream media has not uh, discovered the uh, Thrive Fantasy. You guys got the inside scoop. Check it out. Thrive Fantasy. Download the app. Use our promo code SGP. Sign up and prop up today. Last thing I'll say, and, and just the, just to put the icing. I know people. Some people in the chat are saying the injuries got him off uh, Miami. But the last thing I'll say. Uh, again, what did I tell you, Sean? Week fifteen, must win game start. Uh, they have two road games to close out the season. This mm-hmm. is a must win game for a team trying to get trying to squeak in the back door of the playoffs. And I guess they still can compete for the division, but really tr- squeaking in the wild card. Next up, Sean, an early kick for Russ for Mister Unlimited on the East Coast, visiting the nation's Unlimited. capital, taking on the football team where. I mean, this, this feels like it's going to be the chalky dog of the week. The football team catching five and a half at home plus one ninety on the money line for the football team. Jesus minus two thirty five for the Seattle Seahawks. 44 and a half is the total. I mean, just like I told you, I thought the DFS defense was like way too obvious with like such a high floor with the way this defense is playing. Um, yeah, I I think you can just you know take take a look to see how this team has played against mobile quarterbacks, and let me know how that defense has looked. Just let me know how they have looked against mobile quarterbacks. Daniel Jones two and zero versus them. <laughs> you want to keep going down the list? I, I, oh, someone uh, someone I saw online nicknamed Daniel Jones Vanilla Vic, and I like that. I, I to me Seattle kind of finding their way, and, and I know what you're saying. Oh, they just blew out the Jets, but I I think they that loss to the Giants was a bit of a wake up call for the Seattle team, and really they're getting their offensive line healthy, which they're going to need against this football team's impressive front seven. And Al, uh, the problem is Washington's offense. I just don't see how they're going to be able to move the ball because, and not that Seattle's defense is so amazing, but you have Jamal Adams. Pro either going up against Dwayne Haskins or Alex Smith with a leg injury. I <laughs> now Alex Smith, when he was healthy, looks competent and they're kind of an interesting team. Washington can't just keep getting by playing amazing defense and not offense. Like they, they beat the 49ers without scoring an offensive touchdown. I just don't think that's a sustainable way to win. The The quarterback situation is just too shaky to take a Washington. They've uh, Antonio Gibson looks like he's still out and he was really big for them uh, as far as, you know, getting their offense going. And I think, you know, Seattle may be looking ahead to the Rams, but again, they're not really in a situation where they can look ahead and Seattle actually, they've done pretty well on these early. They, they won and covered against the dolphins early in the season. They've done pretty well historically uh, against the spread in early East coast games, Pete Carroll, 13 and seven. Uh, I think they, I think they get it done here against WFT. Yeah. I, again, I, I, I think, I think we'll, we'll, we'll get to Sunday. And I think that the football team will be a pop, a relatively popular play. I don't know really? if every, I mean, think about it. They've they're coming off two pretty high profile wins. The defense is playing out of their mind and, and people are going to, I know Seattle's coming off a big win, but I think people are going to look to this defense and be like, Oh, that's a, that's a good dog. That's a good money line. I think a lot of people are going to be on the Washington money line. I I'm on Seattle big. I think you know we're not the handicap is is no no more difficult than just saying Dwayne Haskins is probably going to be the starting quarterback. He's probably going to see some time. If not, I mean, you're putting Alex Smith out there. He hasn't practiced this week. I, I just don't see how he's if he does go in. I don't see how he's going to play well. Yeah, I mean, I think to your point, I think the Giants game was a wake up call. And I, I think we could see them going back into unlimited mode. I mean, and we saw it against get- the Jets. They didn't take their foot off the pedal. Uh, this is a team on the fringe of the play. I mean, they have to. They have to win. They they have to win this game. This is a must-win game for the Seattle Seahawks, Sean. Yeah. Oh, lockstep with that. That's another one. I, I feel I feel pretty good about putting that in a teaser. I know Seattle's fucked me before, but 
Chicago heads to Minnesota, where Minnesota was six points on the look ahead, Sean, all the way down to three and a half mm. now. Minnesota minus one eighty. Chicago, the Bears plus one fifty. Forty seven is the total. This is one of the games I just I I don't I, I don't have a good read on. Um, you know, on one hand, Minnesota felt like they should have been in that game to win it at the end uh, against Tampa, and then Chicago comes out and just dominates a bad Houston team. Trubisky looking good, <laughs> uh, saving himself a job once again. I, I don't. Th- I mean, I'm kind of in the camp of like at at first I look at the look ahead is like that's bit, that's too big. That was a yeah. bad number, but now that you're handicapping this game, why is it not just three? Yeah, I mean, it, it briefly did flash at three. Um, you know, there's a lot of things going on here. Ken, Chicago, they, they struggle against the slot. The slot? How's the slot? So Justin Jefferson is primed to have a decent game. Trubisky, he's kind of heating up. Can can he stay hot in a dome against a bad defense? Why the fuck not? I, I know that's and and even David Montgomery has kind of been finding himself. And I think this Minnesota defense is really. Falling off the map, um, our buddy over at Walter Football pointed out the difference, and I think this is a good thing if you can identify these different players. For the Colts, they thought it was Darius Leonard, but it turned out maybe it was more DeForest Buckner. But obviously, Big Darius time. Leonard is a beast. But these defenders that really change the tone of the defense, whether they're there or not, Eric Kendricks, the linebacker yeah. for the Vikings, really seems you see him not guy. beating there, him not being there, uh, and. You know, brother of Michael Kendricks, noted insider trader, <laughs> inciting trader. Um, I, I just think the Vikings defense not quite the same without Kendricks in there. I, I think Chicago's going to be able to move the ball, and I, I think uh, the best unit on the field to me is still that Chicago defense. Um, so I, I think I think they're going to have a pretty strong game against Minnesota. I think they're going to be able to slow down Dalvin Cook. And I think they're going to be up for this game. They always slow down Dalvin cook. That's my other, like, that's the big note yeah. here is like, I know we got screwed last game uh, in the 19 to 13 loss up in soldier field. When uh, Hicks went out, it got hurt. And then cook cooks immediately went over. Um, but I think there's also that revenge spot. And, and again, I, I'm, I'm not sure why this isn't just a flat three. Yeah. So let, I mean, it, to me, it feels like a it feels like a field goal game. Don't you know, division game late in the season. Chicago has a little bit of hope. Um, you know, Minnesota fighting for a playoff spot. I, I why not take the free three and a half? Uh, yeah. And especially in I this know you're supposed to lay the three and a half, take the two and no, a half. No, but especially but. in these years where the home field isn't what it used to be. If the if the home field was really rocking in Minnesota, then I, maybe I just, you're not as inclined. I just think you see an offense that's clearly figured something out since Nagy uh, le- relinquished the control of the offense, and now with Trubisky back in there, like it makes you wonder. Had they done this before they benched Trubisky? Well, and I, and I think they realized with the way their offensive line had been performing or not been performing, really, yep. that uh, you know Trubisky's mobility makes a huge difference. Sure, oh yeah, I mean, cosine. Jacksonville heads to Baltimore, coming off the the short week. The Ravens minus thirteen, minus eight hundred on the money line. Jacksonville plus five fifty. Forty seven and a half is the total. Oh boy. I, I mean, I think after watching that Baltimore Cleveland game, like everyone who watched it, everyone who played in it, just circle that and just let down spot. Yeah. Little air out of the set. If you <laughs> lost money on that little air came out of the sales. If you won money, uh, your sales probably got too inflated. Well, Harbaugh, he, he said it to uh, Stefanski. This is one of the greatest football games of all time. He's like, he's trying to fish hook Lamar in the post game. <laughs> That uh, was a weird video. How did do, how does Baltimore get up for this game? Well, they now don't. They don't. Against Jacksonville on the short week. They don't. And now basically their entire receiver room is out with COVID. Uh, I think that's that's gonna have an impact. I think they're gonna I think it's gonna be a slow, methodical game. I I think Dobbins, Gus Edwards, I think they're just gonna get a ton of carries. And I think they're gonna limit Lamar's rushing. I mean, they they're going into the playoffs, hopefully for them. Are you really going to let him take some shots? I know he's a smart rusher, but um, and you know on the other side, Ravens defense was pretty bad on that Monday night game. Like there was a lot of opportunities for Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb, especially catching the ball out of the backfield. Ryan, yes. what rookie running back for the Jaguars is great catching balls out of the backfield. 
James Robinson, sneaky good spot for Robinson. Of course, our boy Gardner Minshew back at the helm with something to prove. I like I like the plus thirteen. Uh, yeah, no, I mean I'm with you. I I, I think I mean this is this certainly has the makings of the kind of game that Baltimore maybe maybe not as motivated to run up the score, maybe kind of just happy to happy to get the win. Yeah. Uh, they do need the win. I mean, they are no. in a battle for a playoff spot, but I, I they don't need a cover. And like to your point, I just don't know. Like coming into this, to, to come with some the two of the, f- the plays I started with were Jacksonville and, and fading Cleveland because I just you know it's an obvious spot, letdown spot, baby. Uh, San Francisco heads. <laughs> Cleveland's to, hungry. San Francisco heads to Dallas, where the Niners are three point road favorites, minus one sixty on the money line. Dallas plus one thirty five. Forty five is the total. All right, so uh, obviously we're gonna take the Niners, um, but I think we're gonna take the Niners. Uh, Cowboys coming off a win that that was much uh, closer than it should have been. Uh, the Bengals did everything in their power to not score points and allow the Cowboys to score points. Uh, I I don't love that San Francisco has kind of been all over on the map, but I do think that Shanahan has enough pride to craft an offense to come in and butt fuck that defense. Uh, also, McCarthy still the coach. <laughs> yeah, and, and I mean Mike Shanahan versus McCarthy. Kyle, McCar- Shanahan. yeah, sorry, Kyle Shanahan versus Mike McCarthy. Mike McCarthy coming off a win. Um, yeah, it seems like a good opportunity. Dallas still has some offensive line issues. I, I think they will be able to pressure the quarterback again. Zach Martin's still out. Normally that would come into play, and Dallas didn't even look that amazing. I mean, they got that fluke uh, defensive touchdown. Now maybe San Francisco turns it over, but I think Brandon Ayuk. I mean, we were all over him in DFS. I think he is a huge game against this uh, Dallas secondary. It, it's kind of an interesting spot. Does San Francisco really does does their play really warrant being a three point road favorite? But if it's at three, you're kind of in a way just betting them to win. It says a lot considering how much people love to bet on the Cowboys. And Sean, we should point out that the the last time the Cowboys covered the spread, they promptly uh, shit the bed the following week. So <laughs> <laughs> expect them to shit the bed the following week. Although caveat, they are coming home after a uh, two game road stretch. So that that is generally a spot we like. But of course, fuck the Cowboys. Before we get to the afternoon games. <laughs> I don't know if you're paying attention. To I show. was Ryan. I was reading some of the comments in our YouTube Slack. Peace and love. Peace. And YouTube love. chat room. Uh, guy wanting to know any under, any over under leads or official plays for this weekend slate. We usually don't give out official total plays, but I'll tell you one. Denver Buffalo. Denver just, Buffalo. Just what do you like? In, instant reaction. You asked for a total under. Okay, fifty. I know it's really low, but. Uh, uh, Seattle, Washington, 44 and a half. I, I don't, I, I like the under in that. I think that's a 17, 10 game, but again, we're just a couple guys making a couple of picks instead of listening to picks. You could be booking picks. That's right. You could start your own online sports book. All you got to do is go to aceperhead.com slash S G P aceperhead.com slash S G P ACE is the place. If you want to start your own online sports book, sign up over there, get up to six weeks free of their amazing sports book software. That's right. Six weeks. Are you kidding me? Ace is the place to start your own online sports book. Acebread.com slash S G P only, uh, you know, another one of these slates we have, we have eight early games, Sean, two games on Saturday, eight early games, only three late games. I guess you're, you're okay with this. Cause your Eagles is one of them. The first of those games, the Jets head to Los Angeles, where the Rams, coming off long rest, are seventeen point favorites, minus eighteen hundred on the money line. Jets pl- uh, plus eleven fifty to win one game. Jesus, forty three and a half is the total. Uh, I mean, I like the Cam Akers, uh, Higby defense triple stack in DFS this yep. week. The Jets coming off, you know, surprisingly, Sean, the Jets did not underperform the spread by over twenty one points. Oh, really? Because I was going to say they're right on the edge of twenty and us. twenty and a half. Yeah. So uh, fortunately, <laughs> we don't have to uh, dabble in that. This is a big number for Jared Goff to cover. The thing is, he doesn't need to. I don't think he needs to cover it at all. No, and and this is Jared Goff's wheelhouse, isn't it? Torching shitty teams. 
like you give him a good defense. That's kind of where he struggles. But uh, I mean, you know, they're gonna he's gonna be going up against a Vanilla defense with I got much better talent too. Yeah, I, I'm I'm taking the Rams here. I mean, Jets are an auto fade after that humiliating loss. Now, either way, they stayed on the West Coast. I'm not even gonna bother looking up whether they flew back to New York and then flew out again. No, it they, doesn't yeah. matter. They're and the now, Jets. Like who are they? Who are they winning? Who are they beating? They're not. They're and going zero and sixteen. Jets right? are they? They got hit by the injury bug. Then throw that into the fact that they're bad. Aaron Donald, Sam Darnold. I mean, come on, that's good for a touchdown right there. Jets have scored first, and I, I saw the seven out of their first eight games. So maybe they scored the, first. Yeah. So maybe the move is it's that scripted play. <laughs> uh, maybe the move is just wait for the Jets to score and then bet it live, um, because even if the Rams get out seven nothing, they they can only make the spread so high. Rams are facing Seattle next week. Maybe a look ahead, but really, it's a non-conference road game for the Jets, who have nothing to play for, no hope, no. They just got nothing going on. It's 17 points, but I, I'm taking it. Confirmed. They did travel back east. So okay. Didn't even figure. Didn't even do that right. Uh, they certainly at this point the, the league should be looking into this sabotage. Uh, I, I get it. They want a, a a top name guy, I guess, going to New York, big media market. Imagine yep. being Trevor Lawrence right now. Does he go back to school? Does he <laughs> opt back into school? No, I, I think he uses that as leverage to make sure they get rid of Adam Gase, which who knows with Jets ownership, maybe they don't. Mm. He he's got some pictures of donkeys. The donkeys are definitely involved. The Eagles head to Arizona where the Cardinals are six and a half point favorites, minus two seventy on the money line. Eagles plus two thirty. Forty nine is the total. Oh boy. Uh I'm curious on your handicap of this game, because I I, I you know, one of the things you'll hear out in the wild is you got to keep an eye on those cluster injuries. Not a good time to be an Eagles fan. The defense seems beat up. The secondary, specifically, Kyler seems to be getting healthy. Uh, I guess the only real question is, will Hurts will Hurts have enough? The answer is yes, oh, Ryan. Okay. Let's go back on the Eagles bandwagon. Um, yeah, the Eagles have struggled with uh, letting up rush yards to the. Uh, the yeah, quarterback, but pretty, Arizona about that. has struggled as well. Six in the league. You saw it against the saints. The team just has juice. They have energy. I think they're going to be able to put up points against this Cardinals defense. There's certainly opportunities there, especially throwing to miles Sanders out of the backfield. Look yep. for miles Sanders to have over uh, whatever his total is on catches. It's probably going to be two and a half, three and a half. Take the over there. Eagles let us like zero sacks last week. If they can keep, uh, you know, limit, limit, basically putting themselves in bad spots with the sacks, I, I love it. Now, yeah, Rodney <laughs> McLeod, safety is out for the season. Second cornerback, Avante Maddox is out, and there's a chance Darius Slay is out my, as well. My sources are saying it's, he's he's most more likely to miss the game. It sounds Darius like. Slay. Yeah. What are you basing that off of? My sources close to the situation. Darius Slay. He's on Twitter asking about new show recommendation. Feels like a guy okay. whose brain is okay and ready to play oh. some football. He's cleared the protocol uh, previously this season in quick turnaround. So so he's already had a concussion this season. Uh, he was in the protocol. I think that it doesn't mean you have a concussion, right? You're just Concussion adjacent. It's like COVID. <laughs> well, battalion. Yeah, I, I just think that every one of them, everyone in the world, is betting on the Eagles right now. Um, oh, really? I, I feel like a public's going to be all over Arizona after they saw Kyler scampering all over around. Yeah, Good time yeah, to yeah. fade Hurts. Yeah. That fluke win. Eagles 35 23 against the spread as road uh, underdogs. Ryan, I wonder if you the, know what uh, happens. Uh, what do hungry dogs want, Ryan? They get hungry. Look uh, out. And public dogs have fleas. 70% of the tickets on the Eagles right now. And I think the YouTube, again, youtube.com slash sports gambling podcast, they can, they can probably feel your chest puffing out. Uh, big, big, big monster win. Uh, emotional roller coaster. Unfortunately, it's going to come crashing down this week. You're getting uh, your ability to lay less than a touchdown. Give me the Cardinals. I, 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 Cliff I, Kitchens, baby. I hear you, and I, I, I think, I think you're overvaluating the Cardinals because they kicked your ass, Ryan. No, the Giants. No, no. I, I am getting a little cute here, but I am fading for the same reasons I'm fading Baltimore this week. I'm fading Philly. It's a massive letdown spot. Nah. 
They they just had a massive win. New quarterback. Now there's tape. Sean, if this they're, was any other team, you juice. would be, they have you'd, energy. Be, you'd be all over this angle. He's invigorated the team. I, I get it. It's I get different. it. I'm happy for you. I'm happy for you. Really, I am. All rise, baby. I'm just not. I'm gonna lay the points. I'm. I'm not gonna take the points here. Sorry. Well, I tried to talk. I tried. Sorry, to t- I tried to talk sorry. you out of it last week, Ryan. I'm trying to steer you to the right picks here. Uh, next up, a potential Super Bowl uh, preview: the Kansas City Chiefs head to New Orleans, where the Chiefs, Sean, uh, they just keep getting by on the skin of their teeth. Fucking luckiest team in the NFL. I'm. I'm just kidding. Ch- Kansas City minus three and a half. It's weird. They're five and zero oh last five straight up, but zero oh and five against the spread. Th- they are not covering numbers. They are laying three and a half on the road. New Orleans plus one fifty on the money line. Fifty one and a half is the total. I-, I think the conventional wisdom is that this will be a shootout, so New Orleans will have to keep up. Can they keep up? No, no. I think the I think. The Eagles kind of showed what you can do to shut down Taysom Hill. Now, can Kansas City's defense put that together? I don't think it really matters. I just don't think this New Orleans defense can slow down Kansas City at all. I mean, Patrick Mahomes is coming off a game where he threw three interceptions, got sacked for 30 yards, and didn't even sweat being a seven and a half point road no. favorite. I, this this Kansas City team, yeah, they got a little issues with the offensive line, but they just figure it out. I, and their defense, yeah, they they give up a bunch of yards, but still decent against points. And their defense can take risks. You know, they can they can be aggressive on the defensive side because they know Kansas City is just going to go down and score, take care of business. It's minus three and a half plus one hundred. I I would if you're going to bet the Chiefs here, I think you can figure out ways to get it down to three. But I, I'm just not going against Kansas City right now. Sean. Now, granted, they haven't covered the spread in five straight games, but I think this is the one they do it actually. So we, I feel like we were in a very similar situation: Kansas City against Tampa, and we took the points. We took the three and a half. Yeah, uh, and it turned out to be the exact uh, remedy that we needed. Half point mattered. Uh, this defense should has a similar profile: ability to rush a pass or all that niceness. Uh, I I do we we even talked about this last weekend. Kansas City has uh, struggled to defend Mahomes or to protect Mahomes recently. And New Orleans one of the better teams as far as that pass rush. Mahomes I don't think they're going to run him 18 times like Hurts just got run. Saints coming off a loss. I'm sneakily intrigued because I think the way you attack this Kansas City team is you come out with a Taysom Hill. I but Drew Brees isn't going to play not because Drew Brees might not be ready, although who knows. Old man with eleven cracked ribs, who he might be done for forever. Might take him to the farm, but Taysom Hill and Latavius Murray. I know you liked Kamara and DFS. The more I look yeah. into this, uh, there's going to be a, a lot of running the ball. I think they're going to attack the Chiefs the way that any good team should attack the Chiefs, and that's on the ground, slow down the game. I'm going to take the points. I went into this week being like, God damn it, I got to eat my got, I got to eat my medicine and, and take the Chiefs. And then to your point, you pointed it out. They actually haven't been covering. I just I picked no. them on the money line last week, and that was my mistake. Uh, the Dolphins, that is. So I'm gonna t- just like I took the Bucks plus the three and a half. I'm this take, is where they turn it around and cover. I'm gonna take the Saints plus the three and a half. 31 27, Ryan. You heard it here first. Chiefs 31, uh, Saints. Yeah, I, I finally uh, man enough when, to take when Tyree Kill is in a dome. When you put a cheetah inside the Mercedes Benz Superdome. Ain't no man covering that uh, cheetah. Here's what I again. Ain't no man. I'm turning the, into Dia. The pat and mixed with Michael Irvin. Ain't no man covering that cheetah. Yeah, I, I just that video of Dion reacting to uh, Nick Foles having the nickname Big Dick <laughs> Nick is one of the funniest things Long on the internet. Cox. Uh, I am very excited to watch this game, though. Unfortunately, uh, we'll have to we'll have to listen to the commentary of the Eagles Cardinals because Sean will be watching. Yeah. that game. All right, Sunday night football, Sean. Who would have Flex. thought in the year 2020, going into this season, that we would be talking about a Week 15 matchup between the Cleveland Browns and the New York Football Giants being flexed into Sunday night, not just over any game, over a historical powerhouse, San Francisco at Dallas. Sean, do you know this is the first time that Dallas has been flexed out of Sunday Night Football since 2006? Oh my God! They miss Jason Garrett more than they know. <laughs> the Cleveland Browns are four and a half point dogs, minus two ten on the money line. Giants plus one eighty five. Forty four and a half is the total. 
I know you're going to tell me the angle is the Browns are now fucking hungry. The Browns are in a must win situation as are the giants. Couple things to point out one massive letdown spot. That was a game. That was an emotional game. The Browns put everything they had. They made a glorious comeback and they still shit the bed, lost the game and fucked everyone who was laying or catching three points. I'm obviously going to be on the giants here. And, and just to add, I believe Colt McCoy will be out there. Hmm. I believe there's a chance Colt McCoy is out there and, and, and God, God help me. If they roll Dan, Daniel Jones, Hammy Jones out there, if he's not a hundred percent, cause I can't do it. I, I was watching the practice videos of Hammy and maybe I'll have to come up with a new nickname. Cause he's got a hamstring and an ankle going, but he's throwing the ball. I think th- I wouldn't be surprised if they rolled the dice and put him out there regardless uh, uh, or irregardless. I, I'm, I'm just like, I told you I'm fading Baltimore this week. I'm going to fade Cleveland off of this letdowns non-conference road spot. You love going against the team on the road in those spots, Sean, give me the giants in a must win spot. They'll already know that Seattle has waxed the football team and a win can put them back into first place in the division. All rise. Freddie kitchens, revenge spot, baby. Let's fucking go. Or maybe a Baker Mayfield revenge spot oh, because so he made many. him he made him look so bad. Odell revenge spot. No, Odell's gonna be uh, Olivier Vernon revenge spot. Julius Peppers revenge spot. I just that's think, not a dude that you need to hype up any more than he already is. So I, I don't think the Giants are gonna be able to stop this two headed monster between Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb. They know how to stop the run. They put up forty points back to back. Well, I mean, uh, throwing the ball. Uh, I I think this Browns offense has gotten much better. I mean, Baker played a hell of a game back to back games with 40 plus points. The offense, since they got rid of the anchor, AKA Odell Beckham jr. (laughs) They've been, they've been really good. Um, And they're getting some help on their passing the ball on on their defensive side. Denzel Ward back to practice. That is huge. How do you beat the uh, Cleveland Browns? You beat it by throwing the ball outside or with a running quarterback. Now Vanilla Vic, aka Hammy Jones, aka oh, Vanilla Vic. <laughs> I threw that out earlier in the show, Ryan. Um wasn't paying attention I know. clearly. Vanilla Vic, he if he's out there, <laughs> he's not running. And Colt McCoy's not running. So I think who is that guy with the song Inform Snow? <laughs> Snow. <laughs> That's Vanilla Vic. <laughs> Someone needs to Photoshop that dude's face on Daniel Jones's body. Oh yeah. Yes, I'm all please. over that. Yes, please. The, the last deciding fact, and Ryan, I briefly did consider taking the Giants here, but this matchup to me is what swung it for the Browns. Oh, Miles Garrett. Uh, I just playing? don't think. Yeah, why wouldn't he play? I thought he was banged up. No, he's Miles Garrett. He's playing. Okay. I mean the the offensive line just got embarrassed. I'm sure they're going to be f- extra focused. All rise this week. Running laps. All rise. All rise. All rise. Yeah. There's nothing. He's not on the injury report, right? Okay. Miles Garrett against Andrew Thomas. That is the matchup to watch. And I think that's the matchup that's gonna make a difference. It's one thing to catch a sleepy Seattle team and, and put up uh what did they get to? 17 points. I, I just I mean, when was the last you know, with Colt McCoy or without Colt McCoy, this this team it's just struggles. Battle, bro. No, I don't I think I think the Giants are I think the Browns are gonna be able to put up points. I mean Giants, yeah, they put up. They haven't gotten to thirty points in a very, very long time, Ryan. I don't think they've gotten thirty points this entire season. I think that's kind of what you need to beat this Browns. I think it's a, uh, you know, twenty-eight fourteen game Browns. All right, good luck. Good luck to you. Thank you. Uh, I will. Uh, I I will tout that I will be. Uh, I'll I'll drop a video. Bet little. I'm better than Vegas. Okay. Uh, with some some props, definitely a kicking prop for the game. But uh, I'll be I'll be doing a showdown lineup. Wow. Maybe a little thrive fantasy. Throw it all in there. Fucking trifecta. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm surprised you didn't even mention how bad the Giants are at home against the spread. You failed. You're right. They are good. Good point, Ryan. They are shitty at home. Daniel Jones three and nine against the spread at home. <laughs> you went, I, I I'm mean, doing is, your fucking work for you. Well, I mean, is Daniel Jones playing or is legendary uh, gunslinger Colt McCoy? Either way, you oh, get a banged shucks. up Colt. McC- <laughs> you either banged up Hammy Jones or Colt McCoy. It's a win-win. 
This team had, uh, trust me, Sean, this team ran some laps this week. They're going to come out firing <laughs> all cylinders. Monday night football, the Pittsburgh Steelers head to Cincinnati where the Bengals are catching 13 plus 525 on the money line, minus 750 for the Steelers. 40 and a half is the total. Much like the Ravens game, Pittsburgh just needs to fucking win this game and get out of town, right? Yeah. Back to back road spot. So back to back road, Ben. Uh, this Pittsburgh team went from a awesome story, undefeated, to I mean, are are they a, a one and done in the playoffs at this pace? They can't run the ball. No, they, they can't run the ball. They, and it's I, weird. I, They're I, almost I, playing like a dome team. You know, historically Pittsburgh's just been this cold weather, run the rock, play action, and now it's just like this dink and dunk West Coast team. It's weird. Part of me thinks maybe they're just doing this until the playoffs and then they're going to kind of change things a little bit maybe. and and open up to the idea of Ben, maybe hanging back there. These but two second release things. Yeah. They're not going to show their hand in this game. Are no, they? no, I don't think so. I'm saying I, I wouldn't be surprised if you see a slightly different Steelers team come week one of the playoffs. And I'm saying week one, cause their chances of getting a bye game are, are kind of slipping out the window. Zero. Now this Cincinnati Bengals team has looked like complete dog shit, but you want to talk about division games, Super Bowl, Monday night, thirteen points. I mean, there's some prideful men in the city of Cincinnati. And yet, I would ask you, why is this not two touchdowns? No, I know it's it's still even all that considered. C- Cincinnati plus thirteen sounds low. I'm worried about T.J. Watt versus uh, Brandon Allen and the turnovers, et cetera. But I think this. Steelers offense is out of sync enough. There's enough dysfunction going on that I could talk myself into the Bengals plus 13. Uh, this is definitely too cute potential, but I, 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 until I can see the Steelers run the ball, I'm not laying a big number with them. Yeah. Uh, especially on the road. I think they just need to win this game and get like, they need to win and go home and collect themselves and figure. Cause you, you, again, you look at the, if you look at the AFC standings, Sean, this, this is another situation where uh, we could be looking at a matchup. They can be, they can be taking on the Browns. Well, they can be taking on the Ravens. They can be take you know, they can be taking on the Colts uh, potentially in the first round. It, it just, the more I look at it, the more the Steelers might be a team finding themselves. And, and this is a legit look ahead spot for the Steelers. They're on a short week and then they have the Colts coming up next week at home. Followed by the Browns, possibly for the division. The 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 North is not up for grabs now. Hypothetically, the the Browns pull out a miraculous win against Hammy Jones. Then all of a sudden, there is a little pressure on the Steelers team. Maybe you could make an argument that that would help them cover the thirteen. I think they're going to be looking a little past this Bengals team, which they traditionally own. But uh, yeah, I, I think thirteen is just too high. Uh, I feel like we're getting too cute with this one specifically, but I, I like the angle. Um, well, the double digit spreads we're on two favorites and two dogs. So maybe that's, maybe the move is just to take all or nothing and hope, hope for the split there. Cause I don't really like betting to any of these. We talked up. about the home dog angle earlier this season when the giants were up, like it's a historic thing. And it's, it's the home team, like the home team catching double digits in prime time, or at least maybe it was Monday night. They just cover. The Giants covered against the Bucks earlier in the season in yeah. a, the same situation. So not a divisional game, which makes me like the Bengals even more. We made it. Kramer, it's time for the Happy <laughs> Lock Dog Tees presented by my bookie.ag. Kramer. Let you kick things off. No, you go first. Oh, you got all your all rise energy. You afraid to nope, uh, start things first. off? I'm trying, I'm trying to win money, Sean. Don't make this about you. It's not personal. <laughs> and what? Me starting off has historically been better. Yeah, I think so. I'm more of a cleanup hitter. <laughs> all right. Oh man, interesting options here for my lock. I was gonna say, if you need a second to think about it, uh, shout out to Tyler Peterson over in the YouTube chat. Uh, Calling out that he thinks Carson Wentz bought fifty one percent of Jared Goff Sucks Island, which makes him a majority owner in Jared Goff Sucks Island. I don't. Wait, what's the angle there? 
Yeah, it's a good it's a good investment opportunity for for Carson Wentz and uh, for myself. He's got a lot of free time for all the DJs only. Yeah, I mean, if he's not playing football, why not? Uh, why not use some of his money to do some sensible, reasonable investing? I really like Buffalo minus six. Maybe I'm scared of the road favorite angle there. Oh, geez, how do I get away from? Uh, yeah, you know what? Fuck it, Indy minus seven. Oh boy, lock it up. What do you mean, oh boy? I it, continue. I I love and that would have been my lock had I gone first. Oh okay. Well then you I'm blew lo- you blew an opportunity, Ryan, for my dog. Number of dogs I have selected. I mean, some of these double digit dogs I think a bit crazy. You know what? Let's do it. Give me Mitchell, Mitchell Trubisky, and the Bears go into <laughs> Chicago. This team is kind of coming together. I, I do think the Eagles went out right. I predicted so on the Diary Eagles podcast. Got its own feed on the old uh, Apple and Spotify. But I don't want to. I don't want to throw them into this mojo right now for the tease. Interesting tease week. Um, Cleveland plus one and a half. Basically, Cleveland just to win. Um, Buffalo to win, like that. Kind of some uh, road favorite, knocking them down, getting things reasonable. And we'll do it. Continue the road favorite chalk tease. Give me Seattle plus a half. Seattle gets it done. They win that game. Kramer, your lock dog tease. Let's do it. Well, you're not going to let me lock up the same thing as you. Is that what no. you're saying? That's a, that's against the rules. Don't be a kid. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's the, the second favorite play on the board is this Chicago team. I think one team's going in one direction, one team's going another. Mm. Lock up the Chicago Bears. Three and a half is a gift uh, for my dog. Sean, let's let's go. Uh, let's go a little bit to left field here, and uh, might re- maybe maybe I regret this uh, later. Uh, I'm not going to fade Kansas City. Don't don't worry. Shout out to Alex Crouch. Uh, I am going to take the Atlanta Falcons. Okay, plus two ten. Uh, I I think this uh, this this Bucks team has vulnerabilities, and I, I think one of those could be against the passing game. We've seen this all year. Uh, this Falcons team not afraid. So they are they are a live dog in this one. And for my tease. <laughs> Indy down to one. Okay. It's a good tease. It feels like a good tease. Uh, we're going to take the Rams down to 11. Okay. Passing through some key numbers there. And uh, for the last leg of the tease, let's, let's just Seattle's winning the game. I think I, I think the public's going to be all over this one. Seattle wins outright against Washington. I think plus a half. Give me the tease. All right, now let's figure out the uh, Capra Cup lineup, Ryan. Indy, put that as our bonus as well. We, I mean, I would have locked it up. As yeah, well. let me pull up the uh, Capra Cup lines because there's a couple that are. I think we will still end up doing the same ones, but I just wanted to make sure we get the Capra Cup spreads in there. All right, so we like Indy minus seven. And that is what it is on the Capra Cup. What's Chicago? Chicago's three. So we got mm. Chicago plus three. Like it better with the hook. Yeah, but you know, you can't be scared of it. Um, what else do we really like? I mean, I think we like Buffalo. I'm 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 fine taking I mean Buffalo's six and a half in the Capra Cup, but I, I like having a Saturday game on our slate, Ryan. That feels pretty good. I kinda like both Saturday games, actually. Really? So Buffalo minus six and a half. You don't want to take Carolina plus nine. Um, Playing with fire. Oh, it's it's plus ten in the Capra Cup. So we do get that extra bump. I mean, we both liked Atlanta. I guess yeah. this Tampa team. You don't like that one as much. I don't. I I don't mind. San Francisco it. Don't against Dallas. It. We. I mean, Dallas off a cover <laughs> and win. Yeah, maybe we put Carolina in here. So Carolina plus ten, and then do we just say fuck it and throw in uh, San Francisco minus three, or what do you? Are you like it? Should we do Atlanta plus six? Atlanta plus six feels a hair high. I, I like both. I like both Atlanta plus six. I also, I, I would say it comes down to Atlanta plus six, Jacksonville plus 13, San yeah. Francisco minus three or Tennessee minus 11. Let's say let's do Atlanta plus six. I okay. like the three dog, uh, three dog Thursday, of course, on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network with TJ Reeves mixing it up this week. Three dogs, two uh, two favorites. I think that's a good formula for us moving forward. All right, <laughs> okay, new formula signed off. On. Well, you know, we've we've been dabbling with different formulas, so I I, I think that it's one my whole life constantly dabbling with, dabbling. dabbling with formulas. Yeah, it's smoking my weed.
All right. That'll do it for the podcast. Of course, uh, make sure you throw in a review. We just gave out a couple winners for merch Monday and we tweet out the winners at gambling podcast. So if you've left a review recently, go over there, scroll through, check out the tweets on Monday. See if you were one of the lucky winners and again. Thanks for uh, checking out the podcast and uh, thanks for checking us out live on YouTube, youtube.com slash sports gambling podcast, bunch of dudes uh, mixing it up in the chat and possibly a couple of chicks as well. So for the sports gambling podcast. Thank you for participating in the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean second, the money green, and he is Ryan. All rise Kramer. Let it ride.